when you get very good athletes or very good sportsmen and women at a certain category, there are two things which normally happen. They tend to perform extremely well, and by the time they get their time to retire, the country struggles to replace those specific individuals. And that is an issue now we have as a country. And that's why I want to begin my speech tomorrow. And I'm happy my good, good uncles from Sebeya are here. The Sabinis are very good people, very good listeners, very quiet and working. For those who don't know the Sabinis. But for me, I know them. No wonder, there are many in town here, but it's hard for you to know who they are till they openly come out to introduce themselves. When I was in Paris with our children, I promised them the following. I am coming to visit each of their homes because I want to understand the kind of lifestyle and the kind of parents and the kind of families they come from. Why am I saying this? As government, we are beginning to invest in our children. And I call upon you to accept, to allow these children to make this a profession for life for them. I call upon you to remove giving them additional responsibilities other than allowing them to concentrate on their career which God and talent has given them. I know all the backgrounds and families where we come from. Sometimes we tend to put a lot of pressure on them, like now they have come. What is going to happen? I'm coming up with a plan to begin to refocus and to repurpose our children to begin training for the next two years and the next four years for the two international competitions which are coming. So I must understand the kind of environment these children come from. I'm doing that not because I'm a minister. He has thanked those who won medals, but everybody walked away smiling. Now for us also, with the powers I have, there were resources which had planned to do some work, but now that my problems have been solved from the main office, I am directing the general secretary and the council because I expected about seven to how many medals. Because in the planning, I expected seven. But now it is only Joshua and Perus who have got the medals. And there's a balance of the medals. I am directing that the balance of the medals be distributed to all of us who participated in the Just and Prudent Olympic Games because we participated. And this is the honesty and this is how we are going to lead the sports subsector. That whatever is there, we open it up. If it is small, we break it up and we all live when we are happy. So let's clap for Oscar because it was emotion. It was moved by Oscar Chelini. Also the coaches, I met you. I agreed with you. I am also putting in writing that we went as a team. We are coming back as a team. Out of that very balance, let all of you also, your outstanding dues, be sorted so that we live to go home as well. So friends, we are a family. And that means we must have one another's trust. I love working with people. So mine, to you, that we have not yet reached where we want to be. Stop talking about India, stop talking about Morocco. We are Uganda. Joshua, I want to beg you. You made a personal decision that you want to hang up your boots in the truck events. I am coming to beg you before the people say, day. That please, why you want to go for me, it's not yet time for you to reach there. I want to request. And I'm coming, and you will hear my words 
before the entire people of Spain, begging you that Mo Farah ran up to a certain level. You need to reach that level and you are continuing to break records. Why do you want to live when you're still young? Why? You're living that space with you. You people, you know, for me now, I like telling my people, I've just read the dining table. That's why anyone who tries to play with my plate when I beat the dining table, I can guarantee you I'll go with you. <laughs> so Joshua, you've arrived. Please, I can guarantee you the way you're handling yourself, the way you discipline, the way you conduct yourself, the humbleness. These children before you here need you. These decisions we make, they are good, correct. But I'm going to have a meeting with you and my brother Kuka. That Kuka there when I was campaigning, for him he had money, I didn't have money. He openly told me, I'm going to support you. Because of my brain, that Kuka there, he's among the few people who contributed money. The campaign of Sebei, he took care of it. He's the one who paid all the youth of Sebei. All my meetings in Sebi, how many times did I come to Sebi? Over five, six times. He's there. He only say to you, I have read to you, you're speaking the issue of the young people. So Joshua, I'm also here to appeal to you. I'm coming to your home, you came to my home. Listen to me as your brother, you buried my mother. So, I will come and talk to Madame. <laughs> In boots now. <laughs> Why? The only thing I'm and this is for the media and should go to the day. And you Sabinis are here. Take away putting Joshua on pressure. Joshua is Joshua. It is the you people who are putting him on pressure. He's now becoming a community leader. But why? Paris is here. I'm happy that I've known your father in law. Sir, I'm going to meet you over Perus. And you are the auntie. I want to leave Perus with us band. Because I don't want him to disorganize my daughter's career. I was seated in it. You know when Perus was running, we are privileged because of you. I was seated with the extremely very big people. Those who have, who have made no Olympic medals. They told me, that Ugandan girl, the way she's running is very exceptional. The way she jumps the steeple chase is very exceptional. You remember, don't? So now, now others are jumping direct. This is the way she jumps. And they were telling me, this one can dominate this race. But do you know what she needs? She needs support. She needs support. But now if you have my brother, Paris is busy in the rest of the world because she has to go and compete. He also disturbing her psychologically here. How then does she concentrate? I'm up and here, let me tell you this. I am a man. Please, can we have time to these people, their, their money, their sweat is not for nothing. It's extremely difficult. Just imagine the 10,000 race Joshua raised. I could not believe it. I had never seen it. I had never seen it. Look at that level of how difficult it was. I am told when they come for training, you're asking for clearance. From who? <laughs> yes, you're closing the facility. They come there, they want to train, you want clearance. Aren't you from Sebe? <laughs> no, but you are the one who is in charge of the facility. Aren't you from Sebe? So why should you still wait for clearance, even if it's a contractor? Aren't you from Sebe? Can you give them to use the facility? Fortunately, Museven has still given me to be in charge of the sector. I am directing you from today onwards. Any of these people who want to come and run in that facility, allow them to train because there is no way. Because now, why do you want?
want them to continue running in the road. Unless the coaches director let them go and run in the what? In the road. But that facility, you ask for it, it's now ready for you. Now when it's ready again, you're saying, you first go and get a letter from the minister. That's what happened with Perus. Can you imagine? They sent me an email. That please, honorable minister, can you permit Perus to trade? Can you imagine? Forgive me, I want to really say the following. I can guarantee you the future of Ugandan sport is very bright. And you'll hear from the president, he has not started investing in sports. If today we had 700 to give us what prices. Now, the little you got, that was a drop in an ocean. Are you getting me? I told you the next plan, what much we are going to get. We big people, we get more than you, and yet you sweat and we go home and you want you. Why don't we be at the same race, at the same level? I, pr I promise you, I'm here. Fortunately, Dr. Well is here. Fortunately, Kakande is here. Uganda Olympic Committee is here. Please, bear with me when I say my priority is an athlete. That is it. So, I know coaches are very important. But you coaches, you coach an, an athlete who doesn't bring gold medals at home. Will you be happy? Now you can imagine we are happy with two medals. So is it all the coaches, did they coach the two people? So I'm also asking you coaches now that it should not be Joshua Perry. It should not be Joshua Perry. Can we now? Then there is a, there's a one issue I'm studying, and I left it today. Do Dr. Dole, Chairman Tashobia, the issue of managers. I'm beginning to say, get a problem there. The issue of managers. Managers, we thank you, you help our people. But don't divide our people. Please don't divide our people. Because I, by then I was informed, even in your sleeping arrangements, people are beginning to sleep in the camps of managers. But why? You Sabinis have never been like that. I know you as one community who all believe is a brother and sister, period. So I challenge you, the elders, that these managers, if you think they're beginning to divide our people, tell us we'll get them out and get you the correct managers who will even give you better services than what they're giving you now. And they are many. Please don't hurry into signing contracts. Don't. There are many managers out here who are beginning to look at us. And they are ready to come and sign better contracts, invest in you, make you better. And don't make you divided. That thing is creeping up. You know, I am still studying, and I'm going to come and talk to those managers individually. I sent a delegation to talk to them while in Paris. This sport is teamwork. You work for one another. But now, because a manager wants you to win a medal, at the end of the day, you lose out all. By the way, you studied Ethiopia properly. You know, for me, that time when I was there, even if they got more medals, I don't know how many athletes they had. But I noticed that, that the issue of managers was causing competition among these Ethiopian athletes. But if they had worked as a team, to be honest, they would have won more medals. I don't know whether I'm speaking sense. You find the manager is saying, please, what he talks to you is between you and your manager. Then now for you, instead of you working for one another, at the end of the day, you can all achieve. We Uganda are already being earmarked. No wonder, I think 90% of you from Uganda who ran, they had to carry a test on you. Am I lying? Yes, I, was, I could follow. <laughs> Some of you could leave the doping centers at 2 a.m., at 3 a.m. Because you read under the radar. They don't believe that we are able to run with our own energies without this what? This additional substance. But what is bringing it up? Because of the records of some of our managers. Mr. Gunda, I hope I'm very clear here. 
they are not bad, but we want to be clean. So don't accept. You heard the present you also say, what you eat, what you drink. These are all substances which are harmful, which can detract. Now, the issue of pledges, my honorable colleague, you, ask, you wanted to ask me that question. Yes. I want to confirm that the pledges specifically for the areas are very sure. The only problem with all of us here, when you're looking for something, you look loudly. But when it comes, they even don't inform the person who has been helping you to look for it that it has come. <laughs> and for the, let me speak the truth. Yes, because for me, I'm privileged, and tomorrow they are confirming to me that these things have been handled. So if you're going to argue with me, fortunately I'm coming to Kaptora. And this time around, you might, I might embarrass some of you openly before the public, because I'm also not going to accept my name of my president to continue to be soiled that is not fulfilling his pledges. With due respect, this time I'm determined that I will carry before public, because I've also told her, print for me. So that we come with that evidence. But also let's be realistic. The president's directive was almost on three international competitions. Am I correct, Dr. Wayne? Yes, sir. Yeah, he came and found this thing here. Yes, sir. For me, I've only picked, because I promised before him, Mr. President, let me take it up. And you were there. Am I lying? I told him, sir, this one, let me take it up. So, unfortunately, I looked at some of these things. Some of them really were extremely out of what was, what was meant to be given. The question of stipends, Joshua, I think we need to be realistic here. What is coming now is that uh, some of us get one medal. Instead of concentrating on getting additional medals like Joshua is concentrating on the Perus, they don't relax and say, ah, ah, my golden opportunity has come. It's enough. Does he again continue to, or she continue to run? No. So, the pressure has come on us as government also that it should be in every four years. If you collect a medal now, you only stipend for the next four years. If you don't collect at that time, they get another one to go who collects into the same one, into the same program. So that it makes you active and competitive. I don't know whether it's bad. It is good. And by the way, it will even improve the stipend. Stakeholders, I'm happy. I am doctor. I directed you and we talked about this in Paris. We, I want next week after Fiasa, I'm calling a meeting to prepare competition plans for the next games. Apologies. That the reason why we did not participate in many courts was also a problem of the infrastructure. We didn't have enough training facilities. But finally, yesterday I left here at 7. The old day I was in Nambole there, sorting out problems. I left Nambole, went to Hoima. You people, if I told you the stories, what I found in Hoima, you cry for your country. You really feel bad. We have a contractor who paid money two months down the road. The contractor has not started work because some of our people just said a letter. Someone has been sitting on a letter for three and a half weeks, just signing a letter. Aha, uh -huh. then you have very big people who say they are very important, they are, they are managing the environment. Can you imagine someone was sitting on claiming that the, our contractor the, at the over entered into a, a wetland? A wetland, assumed wetland which I compensated the people. Imagine we paid someone money in his land. But now someone in office, with a big office, 
decided to come around and say, we were now fencing a wetland, which I compensated someone with a title. Friends, you mean we can't all see wetlands? And those ones also decided to use their authorities to frustrate a contractor. Let's have a meeting at 8 a.m. I drive the whole night. All the risks, I reach Hoima around midnight. 8 a.m., I'm on site with a contractor. The powerful people are not there. I wait up to 10.30. Fortunately, these media people are here. They were, they were there. Did you see how what time they were coming to do meetings? Yeah. You, you saw. I begin bargaining with the people. This is a national project. I begin working with people out the bush. You show us the wetland. But you, man, when the owner of the land was there, why were you to come and say that this was a wetland? After government has taken possession, you're now coming that this is a wetland. What are you looking for? Bribes. It's corruption. It is the way we are going to lead our country. Fortunately, I understand my boss very well. I told them with due respect, beginning today, I am the owner of the project. If you have anything, write to me. But you cannot stop work. Now, Hoima, because I'm talking about infrastructure, the contract is telling me, since they are saying that this is a wetland, let, you, let me reduce the scope of works. Reducing the scope of works means that I'm taking away some of the sports disciplines. And yet we all want to host international competition. For instance, athletics. The contractor is meant to put for us eight lane training. Are you getting me? So the, do you know what the man was saying? Okay, if that's the case, let me put four lane. <laughs> well, Can you imagine? <laughs> okay, if that is the case, let me remove a swimming Fortunately, the people of swimming are here. Let me remove a swimming pool. Let me remove indoor sports. So that I fit in within the land. Where are we going? You were in Paris. Do you know how full Paris was? Do you know how much money the government of France has bought because of sports tourism? Because of us who are there? Don't you want that money to be in Uganda? We closed the Nambole. Where were we going for, for trials? You see you. Where were we going for trials? In Nairobi. Where are we going for trials? Outside Uganda. That money. Can that money help us internally here? It's a pity. We only got how many? Four. So, I call upon the federations. When it is time for Bane, they are the loudest. But when it is time for the output, they are nowhere. It's only athletics, athletics, athletics. Joshua, on that day I have come, you will speak. Time is up. If we don't see your output, you should not be given money. I don't know whether you're getting me clearly. They put us on pressure. Ah, ah, we are a popular sport. Oh, we are a popular. We are the medals. <laughs> Mark, are you trying to answer back to Dr. Rukari? But I'm happy you're in the media. <laughs> I've never heard you people asking these questions. Where are the medals? Then you, you journalists, you want to ask questions like one. Let me not accuse him here. That one said, I hope he's a journalist and we must verify, that Joshua won a medal accidentally. How can a world record holder, how can someone who broke Olympic, Olympic record win a medal accidentally? Then when Dr. Rukari is saying that you journalists, then you come and answer, please. I've never had one of you come out to withdraw that statement. You're joking. Can you be half of Joshua? <laughs> Who knows you? Other than you being in a, in a, in a, in a, in a TV house, why is it that you are very important? <laughs> you know how much Joshua is selling this country across the globe? <laughs> and you people are saying we should not answer you? Please, we will answer you without fear or favor because you know where we want to go. Please don't play with our sweat. Don't play with our sweat. You continue with your studio life, it is okay. But never play with our sweat. That one I'm answering is generous properly. 
Hello. I have asked you, when have you talked about other federations not bringing in medals? So you journalists, you know, we know how to hit, but sometimes we are reserved. But Joshua, let's think you know those ones. <laughs> because at the end of the day, they should never take us back. We just look at our future. <laughs> yeah, we ignore you. By the way, we sometimes we read these things, we have capacity to answer back, but we just say, anyway, the freedom of seven has given us. <laughs> we even don't know whether they are talking that at the right time when their mind is sober. Anyway, let me leave it there. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> You're joking. Anyway, it's bad that I'm a minister. If I was not a minister, oh no. <laughs> Joshua, ignore. Perus, ignore. Don't be affected by this. This empty teens. That's the right word. <laughs> now, the challenges facing sports are quite many, but. Uh, we will address them because I am happy that the head of state is behind us and is fully involved. We will handle that. I am here and Mama is there. The luck we have, and let's clap for my senior minister, the first lady. <laughs> Whatever we need, we want to have to the president. He gives us. That's the luck we have. And by the way, we must pray that Museko is keeping her while she is because me, I know. Me, I'm never on pressure. Do you know why? Whenever I bring that's a challenge comes, when I walk to her, say, Mama, there's this problem. And she tells you, No, Peter, you wait. Let me talk to Muse. Next day she calls you, No, Muse has given an objection. Not all ministries are like that. <laughs> By the way, not all ministries are like that. That's for the for, for the record. So now let me talk about the Joshua Cheptege Foundation. Who can you have work? And really, I may want to really volunteer to be part of you, to help you. Because you have a brand, a very big brand. And this brand, we need to take maximize it now. And I want to give you a few ways, a few ways of how we can make this brand big. Number one, sit down. Fortunately, one time you were in China. I remember your young brother was in China. I have many companies who met me while in the Olympics who are ready to work with Joshua to design a kit and in terms of sharing because it's about the image, the name, the rights. Do you know how much money it will make? You just need to get a specific select shops. That's all. The good thing the sports law now protects the patent right of an athlete. So anyone who goes to give you fake, you do ones you sue them. So first, if you go back, you know when you look at Michael Jordan, check the game for God's sake. You've made a name. Do you know the matter of you putting your shirts on market? Who does not love you in Sebe? Who doesn't? Come to the rest of the country. Who does not love you? Can you see what was it they don't? Then now you get stressed up, small, small things are stressing you. When you have made the name, you people. So, Kuka, you know, I'm going really to whip you badly. For you, we can box each other. For you, I have no kind words for you. We can abuse each other properly. And this one, Joshua, please, Perus, you are the first woman in Uganda. Today I was reading about you, I felt touched. You people stop sitting on gold. You say the gold is a brand. But you see us, we are just looking at simple things in terms of man. You've been in the media, you are the who commented. Why don't you get time and help our people? We need to put up a brand. Everywhere you go, honorable minister of sports from Uganda. Oh, how is Joshua chapter again? But Joshua is okay. Just a Chinese came to me. He's from a manufacturer. The kit which, you remember China, what they were putting on? There's a kit manufacturer in China. Under that China. This time when China was in Olympics. The whole CEO of that company met me. Said, please, I want to, to help Joshua. 
can imagine, but we in Kapchora, we in Uganda, don't look at it. I hope I'm speaking sense. And this is for generations. And by the way, this one is for generations and generations to come. Number two parliament today, I'm happy colleagues are here. The speaker directed that we get a form. If you think you're shy, I have a very good rapport with members of parliament. I have, and you know it. So, why don't we generate a form and get money from parliament to support the Joshua Chepsikian? Let's hard with that. Why don't we get a form as members of parliament? And I urge all of you members of parliament from Sebe to be on the front line. Time is now. If we are hiding from the back, we must move together. One person always is it for you also look for your friends. I also look for my friends. Why don't we raise money and we sort out the Joshua Tepeje Foundation once and for all? What are we that? And even you, Sabinis, why should you allow Joshua? Joshua, 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 Joshua. Why don't I know many of you in Kampala here? When have you come together to sit and say, let's support our own children? It shouldn't be a one from Teso. But you know, you and us, Sabinis, you know, for me, I was told that if you want to marry a woman, if you don't fail from Teso, go to Kapisebe. That is my there for those who don't come from there, forgive us. <laughs> Now look at the Honorable Chemtai that did I do it? Honorable Chemtai. <laughs> Let me answer you back. You blame Honorable Kuka. My brother Kuka. Whether I didn't blame him. Because I used to be in Sebe all the time. 